we have seen about the various occupations followed by the tribal groups of India and also what the tribals are besides in spite of the fact that there were no sharp major economic or political divisions among the tribals, some people became more powerful than the rest of the tribal members. And these tribal members who rose to the position of the chief, we are going to look into their condition before the coming of the Britishers and after their arrival. As far as their position is concerned, before the arrival of the Britishers, they were very, very powerful people. They had lot of economic pass and they had great hold over their tribe. They made their own laws which were supposed to be followed by the rest of the tribal members and also the, he had his own police and he gave laws on forest management. In fact, the chief of a tribal group was held in high esteem because he enjoyed political, social, economic and sometimes even religious sanction. But after the Britishers arrived into their lives, encroached in their lives, the things changed for the tribal chief. Now, he just became a tool for the Britishers to get the things done as they wanted in the tribals by this tribal chief. He in fact lost all his administrative powers. He no longer could frame laws for his own tribe. He had to follow the British rules. In fact, he was also supposed to be sending tribute to the Britishers and also make the tribe discipline as the Britishers wanted. So, it was almost a topsy-turvy position for the tribal chief because earlier he was all in all and now he became a fiddle, a tool for the Britishers. This was about his condition, position. But now we will move on to what happened to the shifting cultivators during the British regime. As far as the shifting cultivators are concerned, they were ever disliked by the Britishers. Because the Britishers felt that it was very difficult to control and give proper administration to the shifting cultivators since nobody knew about their whereabouts. Today they were here and tomorrow they could be at another place. So it was very difficult to trace them. Besides, they even felt that when shifting cultivation is practiced, one is not sure of the revenue that can be generated. And the Britishers needed a regular flow supply of revenue for which they started encouraging the shifting cultivators to settle at a place. And for this, they started land settlements in India, about which you read in the previous chapter, like the permanent settlement of Bengal, the Rayatwari settlement, the Mahalwari settlement and so on. But it was not easy to convert the shifting cultivators as settled cultivators because there were numerous problems. Sometimes the water was scarce at a place. And if the people continued to till the same land, then the production became less and less, which was not economically viable to the cultivator. Therefore, in northeastern India especially, the shifting cultivators protested against the new deal that they must become settled cultivators and ultimately the Britishers had to kneel down. 